Hey, what's going on everybody? In this video, we're looking at the full public release of version 10. Uh, there is a lot to go over in this release. I know it's been out for a few days. There are a few other videos up, um, but I've been working on this video for a few days myself because I didn't want to leave anything out. I wanted this to be a really in-depth overview. So there's going to be timestamps in the description in case there's just certain things that you're interested in that you want to see. You can skip around and, and learn about those. I tried not to leave anything out. If you notice anything, put it down in the comments because there is a lot. We'll go over Smart Summon a bit in this video. I do have a separate full video about that where I tested it in a few situations. There will be more to come. I'm really interested in it. It's fun so far. Um, I think the use cases are still pretty limited, but I think it's eventually, just like Autopilot, it's going to get better and better, and it's eventually going to be really good and really useful. Another reason I wanted to release this video is if you have any questions, uh, leave them below and I'll, I'll get to answer you. I noticed some of the bigger channels that put out these videos don't respond to comments like ever, um, and Maybe they get too many, but they don't seem to respond to any. So I, I do try really hard to respond. It might take me a day or two, um, but I'll always get back to you. So anyway, let's get into the video. There's a lot to cover. This is a really nice update. There's a lot of cool things. Let's check them out. Really quick, looking at the release notes, I'm of course not going to read all of this to you, but I will slowly scroll through it, and anything you want to read, you can just pause on that, and you can read anything you are interested in. Oh man, I cannot wait to use Smart Summon. So this is my first time in the car since the update completed. I have not used anything. I haven't tried any of it yet. So we'll go out, we'll do testing on all of these different um, things, autopilot, everything like that. Wow, this is a lot of release notes. Um, yeah, normally there's not near these many notes in a release. Now we are going from version 9 to version 10, um, rather than just a point release. So it does make sense. Um, but man, this is just so exciting that a car can do this. I always am talking about how my car is better than when I bought it, and it's, it's just unbelievable. Okay, so that's everything. So anything you want to read, pause and check it out. All right, just doing some charging here. Let's go to entertainment and let's check out the theater first. I want to see um, some of these things here. So Netflix, let's check that out. So you're initially offered with 30 days free, um, but I do have an account, so I will sign in really quick. Okay, that scared the crap out of me. <laughs> um, you can control with the scroll wheel on the steering wheel the volume. So this is just like the experience you'd get on your TV or your browser. Let's check out some Black Mirror. Love this series. It's just uh, a little ridiculous at times. Still got your skip intro button. That is awesome. So I figured this is a good part of Black Mirror to start at. Uh, she's driving her electric car and this is like in the future. And she's her car is not compatible with like the new charging infrastructure. <laughs> it's just funny. Um, but anyway, as far as Netflix on the car... Quality is really good. Um, it's, of course, not the same as in my living room, but the sound is awesome. You can see there's subtitles. We usually um, keep our subtitles on. Okay, I just got caught up watching that. <laughs> I love Black Mirror. Um, anyway, this experience is pretty cool. I personally don't see myself using it all that much, but the quality is pretty good. The sound is awesome. Uh, the sound is really good. Uh, so it's it's just nice that it's such a nice polished experience. I am on Wi-Fi here. Um, I can't show you that, but I'm on Wi-Fi. Oh, cool. You can see your range. Oh, so that, okay. So my car is charging right now. And so you get this information up here. I guess if you're supercharging, you could see your range. That's really cool. Um, and then you can adjust your temperature still while you're watching and you can adjust the brightness. So my brightness is all the way down. I'm in my garage at night. So, um, but yeah, it gets pretty bright. This is, wow, this is very polished. It's a really good experience to have kind of the car controls integrated here, um, you know, up in the top like that. When you want to exit, you can just click, and there's an X at the top right. You can click that, and we're back to the theater. Um, so Hulu is a new addition. I don't need to go through all of these. It's it's going to be a similar experience. You log into your phone, and you can use Hulu uh, just like you would on TV or your tablet or whatever you want. We can check out YouTube really quick. I'm interested in um, the features that are available if you're logged in, um, if it's just like on the computer, because I think it is. 
Ooh, Andy Sly's video is up 15 seconds ago as I'm recording mine. That's awesome. So checking out YouTube really quick, you can see that I'm logged in. This is my account. And one thing to note is if you log into YouTube like this, now when I go to the browser, this account is logged in. So my Gmail is logged in across the entire car and there's really no way to lock people out. So I think if like I was to give this to a valet, they would be able to like use my Google account because it's logged in unless I'm logging out every time. Um, so just something to note, there needs to be a way maybe to do a pin or something to there's not a fingerprint scanner in the car or something. That'd be pretty cool. So you can see everything's working here. Um, it looks just like the browser. Uh, so I've clicked around with some of the personal account stuff that I of course don't want to show. And it's just like you're in the browser. I mean, there is really no sacrifices here. Um, and I don't have YouTube premium, but I've heard all of that works too. And if you've rented movies or bought movies or anything, all of that will work as well. So links to the outside work. Yep, took me right to my referrals. Hitting the back button puts you right back into YouTube. So the experience is really good. It's seamless. Uh, everything, it works just, again, it works just like you're on a computer. So you can also control volume with the scroll wheel in YouTube. In the beta, you couldn't do that, so that's nice. Uh, we can, I keep, I, I always do that where I accidentally hit the wrong thing. Uh, like that, I don't want that. Um, so you do have ads, which is pretty good uh, for me, <laughs> helps me out. Um, you can select your quality here. So it defaulted to 720p. Uh, if you hit 4k, of course the screen is not 4k, but, oh yeah, that was a big quality jump. I, you know, I assume it won't come off, uh, in the camera, but yeah, it looks good. I mean, it looks good. It's, it's like Netflix, you know, the videos are fine. I could see myself using this being in a supercharger or something more than like Netflix because the superchargers are so fast now, you're not going to spend all that much time there. Got my new logo down here in the corner. You can end the entire video. Is this, it's supposed to be clickable. And yeah, so you can click that if you're watching uh, and it takes you to my channel. So yeah, it's just like in the browser. This is a really good experience. Everything works really well. And then just to show you, if you're curious, if you're in Netflix or YouTube or any video app, and you put the car in drive or reverse, it just instantly kicks you out and you can drive the car. So in our music tab here, Spotify is something people are really excited about. Uh, I don't know if you can see, let me get up close here. There is two dots above the O. Um, I'm not sure why it looks like that. I'm not really all that familiar with Spotify. I don't use it, I don't have an account. Um, so I'm not gonna be able to use it. But um, if you use it, that's awesome. I, I don't know, I, I don't mind the built-in stuff the car already had. All right, so we're checking out karaoke. I can't play the music for you because, you know, I'll get copyright strikes and my whole channel will be destroyed by Taylor Swift. Um, but this is it, it's just like karaoke. The one thing I notice is like this graphic, again, I don't know if this will come across in the video, but it's really like, the words are blurry. It looks really low resolution. I don't, I'm not sure. Um, why it looks like that when YouTube and Netflix looked awesome <laughs> and now this looks kind of like crap. I mean, at least it's just words, but it's a little distracting in my opinion. So zoomed in here, as the words are playing, if you want the singer to sing with you, the mic looks like this. Uh, and so now Taylor Swift is singing. If I click that, it does kind of load the song again really quick, but now there's no singer. It's only the background music and it would only be me singing. If you want to get out of here and you want to pick another song, you click this symbol right here. And now you're back in the main menu of karaoke and you can pick another song, you know, to have fun with. I could definitely see, it'd be a lot of fun on road trips. Maybe when Stephanie and I go to New York, we'll, we'll play around with that. That could be a lot of fun. Uh, one thing about the karaoke, so uh, I can't, I have to have the sound off here, but if I'm playing this song and I wanna have lyrics, you actually can turn the lyrics on when you're driving. It just says, they're for passengers only. You have to click, I am a passenger. And there we go, now we have the lyrics. Um, I don't think this is too big of a deal. It's very similar to what Waze does. If you use the app Waze, it says the same thing. If you try to type something in while the car is in motion, it just says, are you a passenger? And you say yes, and then you can type because you're the passenger, right? All right, so new feeling hungry and feeling lucky menu options for navigation. If you click hungry, it simply will pick a restaurant near you get rid of that, that uh, has good reviews. It's supposed to be something that's popular um, and that people are interested in. And I guess over time, as Tesla owners continue using this, um, it'll get better. Now this place is open actually. So I would assume then 
any hungry place it takes you, yeah, they're also open. So that's really nice. It's not gonna suggest something that's closed. And it tells you the hours right there. They're open until 11 p.m. So I got about an hour if I wanna go there. Lucky is the same kind of deal here, except it just takes you somewhere fun. So in this example, it took us to a park. So that's a little creepy. Um, well, actually it says it's open until 10 p.m. So I wouldn't wanna go there. Just trying another Lucky here. Um, and this one is closed, so it did suggest a place that's closed. There's probably not a whole lot that's still open um, that it's going to suggest, but... And then the beach, which is also closed. So, yeah, not something you want to be using in the middle of the night, but it's still fun. Another gigantic maps improvement, in my opinion, is all these little symbols here. They've been here, um, but they never did anything. So now you can click them and you can actually interact with them. For me, that was so confusing about the maps, is you'd be looking here, and you'd see all these little symbols everywhere, but you'd click them and nothing would happen. So now if I'm curious about Red Robin, I can just click that, and it tells me all the information right here. I have the reviews, I have the expense of the food there, the hours, the address. I can call straight from this menu, call from the car. I mean, it's wild. Uh, it seems like kind of obvious, but it wasn't there before and now it's there. I mean, you can even just check their website. So if I click that, boom, there's the Red Robin website and come on, get out of here. Uh, and I can use, and now I can check their menu and you know, I can decide if I wanna go there. Under safety and security, you now have Joe mode, um, which will be demonstrated in the driving portion. Um, and another thing you may have noticed, if you look up here, these options are actually tied to your profile. So right now I'm under easy entry, so that's not actually helping me for when I drive. So I need to go to my dirty Tesla profile. The wheel and the seat have moved. Now, when I turn Joe mode on, it saves it to this. So if I use another profile, Joe mode won't be turned on. Um, and now it makes it more clear. A lot of settings were like this already, but it's more clear that it's being saved to your profile because it shows you that little graphic. Um, but again, if, if you're interested in this, look in the description for the time. I'll try to put a timestamp for Joe mode specifically, but I'll be testing this while I'm driving and testing autopilot and things like that. For future software updates, you'll get more information. You can actually see right here, it says checking for updates, which I don't think it said that before. It's only ever said, you know, your car is up to date or there's an update available. I've never seen it say this. And now when it's downloading and installing, you'll get more information. Like you'll get a progress bar to see how close you are to being finished. And you'll see what version you're actually jumping to. Before this, it was always a mystery um, what version you were gonna be moved up to. Also something to note for Smart Summon, there is this standby mode, which is new. And basically it just makes the car stay awake. So it's ready for you to start summoning it. Um, otherwise the car goes to sleep and it can take a little bit of time for the app to wake it up and get everything ready for the car to come to you. So you can exclude the places where this is active so that your car will sleep at these places. Um, for now, I'm going to leave it on, but I'm a little bit concerned about the battery drain it'll cause. Um, so I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure what to do. I'm not sure what to do with this option because I feel like when we go on our road trip, I'm going to want this off. Like what if we park at the hotel and the car's just sitting in the hotel parking lot all night, not charging? Um, you know, that'll kind of suck to have this on. Uh, so I'm, I'm a little conflicted on this option, but for now I'm going to have it set to on. Another really nice map improvement, when you are typing a destination, it auto-completes, which it's done before, but now it actually shows you the distance to each before you even click it. So I can choose of course, the closest Meyer. So the other improvement under the entertainment tab is the arcade. Uh, it used to be, in my opinion, kind of an ugly, just like black screen with weird, I don't know, it was weird before I thought, and this is a lot nicer. Um, so you can scroll through your games here and decide if you want to play any of these, beach buggy, chess, you know, whatever, we've had these games for a little bit. Um, of course, Cuphead being the newest edition, and you can click play game right there. So this is a lot nicer. You get a preview of the game so you can see what it's going to look like before you actually play it. Um, and then you just click play game. You can see here the game is not available to play. You have to plug in a controller. So I picked up just an Xbox 360 controller, a wired one. Um, so when I plug it in, now the game becomes available. So you click that. I just picked up this controller from GameStop. It was like 16 bucks. I'll link to something similar on Amazon in the description. <laughs> so this is pretty funny. Um, I've, I haven't played this really. I, I tried it for a second. But I didn't even really get past the tutorial. So you can't control the volume with the scroll wheel on the steering wheel. Uh, you have to use the controls on the screen in the top right. Um, but I can just hit, you know, buttons here. And so my save is still there. 
um, even though I didn't really get past anything. All right, so here I am. I just came out of the first, you know, you read some stuff and you learn how to basically jump and then you start the game. So, wow, this is really cool. Uh, I know this game was super popular. Um, I do play some games on the PC, uh, but I don't have much time for that lately. Right, some coins. <laughs> I don't know what they're for. Oh, probably for the shop. Yeah, I do. I play a little Apex Legends on the PC. That's about all I play these days, and even that, I barely have any time to get on. Okay, so you can select your difficulty, simple, regular. There is actually, um, if I hit start here, there is multiplayer in this game. Um, I don't know how to do it. Yeah, I don't know how to do the multiplayer, but if you have two controllers, I know that you can play multiplayer on this game. I've seen it done. Okay, there's no difficulty on this. Let's try this, and then that'll be it. Man, it's just... I'm going to turn the volume up just a little bit, because it'll make the game better. Um, this is very cool. I mean, I don't know. Like, honestly... Oh, okay, I thought that was something I had to hit. Um, this is probably not something I honestly am going to use all that much. I just am not, like, idle in my car very often. Um, I do a lot of driving, but uh, I drive, and, and that's it. I'm not really sitting around in my car. It's really awesome to have this option, though, and the quality here is just, like, blowing me away. Like, think you know, think of most cars that you get into. They have these tiny little unresponsive low resolution screens i mean they couldn't even dream of doing something like this um and again it's just comes in a free update to the car i didn't have to pay for this it's just like oh here's your cool game uh and, and that's it i mean it's just it's wild um and you know i actually do want to kind of sit here and play this for a while <laughs> but um i don't know i guess i'll beat this level and and that'll be that All right, that's enough of that. That's really fun. Really, really fun. Um, I could see playing that for a few minutes at a supercharger or something. And then here's this screen for you really quick. Um, I just unplugged the controller and it, you get this message. So if I plug it back in and hit a button there. But once I unplug the controller, yeah, it instantly tells me you need a controller. That's the only game. All the other games you can play without a controller. That's the only game you need a controller for. In terms of dash cam improvements and sensor mode improvements, two awesome things. Now, for your dash cam, the rear camera is always recording. So here's an example of just the rear camera. So now you have four angles all around the car. The rear camera is really wide, but it's awesome to have that perspective added because that was a huge blind spot in people's Tesla cam footage. And also for sentry mode now, it has a separate folder. So sentry mode used to be in the saved clips folder, which was mixed with any clips you manually saved while you were driving. Um, and it was kind of annoying to go through all those. Now, if there's nothing wrong with your car, you just delete the sentry mode folder. You don't care about any of those. And your saved clips, you know you wanted those because you saved them intentionally. So let's go over app updates as far as they go. Uh, I noticed I got this message in my Tesla app. So that's pretty interesting. They don't normally send out messages for software updates. But again, this is such a big update. Um, I can see why they did that. If your car is unplugged and ready to summon, a new button will appear right here that says come to me. And you can use that button, you can just hit it and the car will start coming to you. You'll get a little graphic up here that'll show you what the car is seeing, the obstacles around it, and kind of the path it's going to take. So in terms of smart summon, on top of the car here, you'll also get, it'll say smart summon, you click that, um, and then you'll get a map view and you'll also see the route that the car is going to take. And this is really valuable because if you're looking at the map, you can see exactly the route the car is going to take, and if it's not a good route, just don't do it. Because even if it's going through an island or it's going somewhere it's not supposed to go, the car is going to attempt it. Now, it'll stop and use the sensors to not crash into anything, but it's going to get awkward because the car is going to sit there and kind of try to figure out what to do, especially if people are waiting for it. Under the controls part of the app, we have some new options here. Uh, you can see first home link, so you can now control your garage door with this button, open and close. On top of that, we also now have window control. So you can't fully control your windows, but if you look here, you see the window on my car is open. And if you look at the app, I can click this, and it'll close the window. So if any windows on your car are open, you can now close them from the app, which is awesome. If all windows are closed, you can now click this button, vent and you see all windows go down just a little bit to allow the car to vent if it's super hot on a sunny day. Uh, and then you can, again, close them from the app. 
Sorry, it's hard to do that. I'm looking through the camera. So you can't control individual windows with this, but it's nice that you can close them if you left them open and you can vent them on a hot day. Okay, so just going out for the driving test, uh, you can already see with the new visualizations here, we have the double line on the left, that's new, and the single line on the right, that's the same. Um, but it would always just be a line on each side, that's it. Uh, when we get further ahead here and the road breaks up, you'll actually see the broken lines appearing as well, indicating you can pass. Um, and also really exciting, we have traffic coming in the other direction, it actually missed that car. Um, but here's the broken lines, so cool. Even though we have a solid line with broken lines, the Tesla still sees it as broken lines. Um, so if we turn on autopilot here, at this point there really shouldn't be much different. Uh, we still have the limit of five over on a non-divided highway. A few more cars coming up here. One, two, three, detected all of those. Very nice can increase our follow distance a bit. So it's definitely not detecting all of the cars. Um, you know, I'm not sure why that is, but it's doing a much better job than it used to, that's for sure. Okay, so we're on a divided highway, pretty good, and we can now pinch to zoom out or zoom in. Um, you can see cars approaching from behind. Uh, not something I think I'd use all the time, but I think this will be really useful in any autopilot videos I'm doing. Especially in the Tesla challenges, we can look around and kind of see what the car is seeing. I wish there were some more people around me, but it's seeing pretty far up there. Um, even that black pickup truck up there, um, it's picking that up as a pickup truck, even though the bed is covered. So that's pretty nice. So there are some cars behind me. Wow, yeah, it sees way far back there. Um, here, let me turn that on so you can see how far back they are. Um, and they're getting picked up, no problem. So it's switching between this car and then there's some cars back there as well. So it's pretty fun. Um, I'm not sure it's all that useful, but I like it. <laughs> so we're gonna head home the wrong way and we're gonna use some Navigate on Autopilot just to see everybody said it's been um, it improved. It's been a lot smoother. Um, so right now I'm not that impressed with the acceleration, so I'm gonna step on it just because somebody's behind me and they're like, yo, we're getting on the highway. So I'm just gonna let the car do its thing. So there's the new lane change animation. Looks pretty good. Never turned the turn signal on, um, but it did the lane change. Um, and then it says it wants to move to the faster lane. Somebody's coming up very fast. And it did a good job waiting for them and moved right over, so that's really good. Uh, we're behind this pickup truck, and you can see it looks like a pickup truck, very cool. Um, and we're getting past on the right, so I don't know why it came into this lane. The lane change was really good though. Let's switch back, let's get out of the passing lane. And yeah, really, really good. Um, slowed down nicely to stay behind this car. And you can see, you know, the dashed lines, you can see the solid lines. You can see all around the car. Yeah, again, I mean, you're not gonna be sitting here fiddling with this, I hope, while you're driving. Um, but it's interesting, if nothing else. You can zoom in, that looks really cool. Wow, <laughs> that looks awesome. Really futuristic looking, but I'm not really paying attention, you know, to what I'm doing when I'm doing that, so it's not very useful. All right, and then we're coming up on our exit. Hopefully this will be a really good exit. Wow, the turn signal is so quiet. So for the Joe mode, uh, yeah, it really works. Um, I feel like the autopilot chimes and stuff they're quieter but not that much quieter but man like the turn signal I can't even hear um, which I don't really enjoy that yeah the turn signal is super quiet oh man that's unfortunate because I was really looking forward to turning Joe mode on so that I could turn the chimes down you know all the autopilot stuff and the warning chimes because those are just kind of sharp and, and annoying um, but I want to hear the turn signal so I'm not sure I'm actually gonna keep that on I was pretty convinced I was gonna keep that on all right, that's everything. I hope we got it all. I know it was a lot, uh, but it's a huge update. It's really fun. I love covering these updates, sharing with you the new stuff. I think a lot of people that don't own the cars like these uh, update videos and they want to see what's going on in detail. Again, if you have any questions, leave them below and I will get back to you in the comments. See you in the next video.